Dolphins fan. Good morning to you. Brianna was just talking to Pastor Brian about that moment in the courtroom where the defense attorney said he didn't want any more black pastors in the courtroom. These very public, direct statements that I think were startling to a lot of people. I think what hasn't been discussed enough, though, is why he thinks it will work, right? What does it tell you that you have a defense attorney who thinks that will work? Well, uh, first of all, I mean, it, it really uh, should shock the conscience of the nation that that kind of rhetoric would uh, be spoken out loud in public any place, uh, in a shopping center. Uh, I don't want any black pastors around here. Um, now, you got to remember, this is Georgia, where uh, you know, pastors are welcome everywhere. Uh, people pray, and uh, you know, I'm from, from the South. Uh, it's the black. It's not the pastor. It's the black. That, that's that's the, the, the motivation here. Um, it's absolutely absurd, by the way. I mean, if Reverend Jesse Jackson and his advanced age, who is very ill, with a mask on, he's not even recognizable, <laughs> Uh, if that's somehow a threat, just having his presence there is somehow a threat to the good working order of a courtroom, uh, that says a lot more about the racial uh, uh, fantasies of, of white racists than it says about what Reverend Jackson was doing. He was literally just sitting there with a mask on. You wouldn't even know he was there. They are bringing this up because they are desperate to create any record, uh, any opportunity for a mistrial or for a reversal later on because they don't have anything else. They have three murderers who killed an unarmed black man in broad daylight and actually helped to film it. And they have nothing else. And so they're going for these uh, ra uh, racial, uh, this kind of racial bomb throwing, hoping that somehow, somewhere in the court system, they'll be able to say, well, the jury was intimidated into doing this. And so that, the, 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 part of it is the desperation of a case that has no case. You know, the prosecution, we just heard uh, Ellie Honig, our legal analyst here on the program say, that the way the prosecution handled Travis McMichael yesterday was textbook. Like, this is a video that should be yeah. played in law school. And she got him to admit that he was just running. You know, I mean, what do you think about the, the it's really, he's had a poor showing, just objectively on the stand. What do you make about his testimony and the effect that it should have on the outcome here? Well, I, it was brilliant. I mean, literally, he said, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. He was just running. I mean, they let me just <laughs> drop the mic. If you, if, you, if you could drop the mic in a courtroom and walk off, that's the time to do it. Uh, I wouldn't advise anybody to do that in a courtroom, but that's the time to do it. It was brilliant. It was, it was textbook. Um, but the reality is it was just revealing the truth. There was no excuse for doing this. And it's a part of this broader conversation in America right now where there seems to be this uptick in, in, in racial uh, violence directed against African Americans by uh, white vigilantes who feel that they you know, have a license, that, that their whiteness gives them a license to enforce the law, and our blackness is evidence of a crime no matter what we are actually doing. And this has you know, come to light in this particular case. I'm very glad there's a, a capable prosecutor there uh, to uh, 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 you know, uh, make the argument. Man, I think people know that you pour your heart and soul and most of your hours into criminal justice reform. Uh, and we're watching along with the rest of us and working uh, with so many others for clemency for Julius Jones in Oklahoma. And the governor there stepped in just a few hours before his execution. He was not execution, uh, executed. Life in prison without parole after 20 years how do you see this moving forward? Uh, obviously, a victory to stop the execution, but mm -hmm. it stopped there. Well, listen, um, he lives on. That's the most important thing this morning. He is alive this morning. He's alive this morning. He lives on, and we fight on. Uh, this young man is not going to die in prison. His innocence is so obvious that it united this week, where everything is divided, everybody's fighting, everybody's arguing, it, it united white, black, brown, right, and left. Don't forget, it wasn't just Kim Kardashian West or, or Brian Stevenson or, or uh, Scott Budnick or, or, or Pastor Mike McBride on the left who were screaming about this. You had Tim Head from Faith and Freedom Coalition. You had uh, 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 Dan Lope. You had Matt Schlapp from the American Conservative Union screaming, this cannot happen. 
This is wrong. And so an unbelievable right-left coalition came together to say, you can't kill an innocent guy when the actual killer has been confessing for years, when the, the, the actual board in the state said, we can't kill the guy, and the governor was going to override his own board and the confession of the real killer just to murder someone. And so people came together. And I got to tell you, uh, uh, I woke up yesterday afraid that we hadn't done enough. And we and, and it turned out we did enough to keep him alive. So he lives on. We're going to fight on. We're going to get him home. But I do want people to know that despite all this division and crazy stuff, there are moments when the, the, the conscience of both sides, all races, can be invoked and can be brought forward. And that happened yesterday. And we should be proud about that. You know, you do such a good job, good job pointing out those moments. And I know it keeps you going. Uh, Van Jones, thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you.